Well, let's take our Bibles now this morning and open to the book of 1 Peter to begin with. 1 Peter chapter number 4 today. If you came in the Christmas spirit, look, hoping for a Christmas message, I apologize in advance. I don't know what Brother Robert has planned for tonight. Maybe it'll be Christmas. I don't, I don't know, but not this morning. I want to look at a verse of Scripture today to begin with, and um, I want to preach to you today a, a very much a topical message, something a little, admittedly, a little bit out of the ordinary. But 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse number 15 is going to be where we begin today. The Bible says, But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Does it strike you as a little bit odd that you have a list of four sins here? Murder, stealing, being an evildoer, and then included in this list is being a busybody. You know, if we were to rank sins, we probably would not include being a busybody in the same category as being a murderer. And it's not to say that the consequences of one are the same as the other. It's certainly very different. But there is a definite sense here in which sin is sin. And though we would think that one is worse than the other, they're all bad. They're all sins against God. And they're all sins, therefore, that we should avoid. And I want to preach today on the topic of being a busybody. The title of the message is Mind Your Own Business. A busybody is simply a person who meddles in the affairs of others. And the word, interestingly, is actually used three times in our Bibles. But the concept of being meddlesome and being a talebearer is actually mentioned many more times. You find these mentions in the New Testament especially, and 2 Thessalonians 3.11 really summarizes the biblical teaching about being a busybody when it says it is disorderly. It's out of place. It is, uh, it's bad conduct. Because not only is it rude to intrude in other people's affairs, it requires you to neglect your own business in order to do it. Now turn over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse number 11. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse number 11. First Thessalonians 4, 11 says, And that ye study to be quiet, and, that you, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you. We're kind of going to use this as, a, as an outline today, and look at it from two different angles. First of all, we're going to kind of reverse engineer it and see in this verse the symptoms or the diagnosis of a busybody, but also at the same time, we'll then look at what the cure is for being a busybody. Also, we're going to look at the idea that there is a balance that we should have as Christians, that we ought to have genuine concern for others, but we must not confuse that with being a busybody, because if we're going to help others, we have to first mind our own business, and take care of ourselves. And the simple truth boils down to this, is that you are responsible for one person, yourself. And you must make sure that you mind your own business because one day you will answer to God for your life and no one else's. Heavenly Father, pray that you would help us today as we look at your word, give us understanding, Lord, I pray that you would give us genuine concern and compassion for those around us and not just simply idle curiosity. 
And Lord, that we would love others and thus we would honor you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I want you to look with me here at this verse, 1 Thessalonians 4.11. Again, let's read it. It says that you study to be quiet, to do your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. First of all, we see in this verse the diagnosis of a busybody. And we're going to look at this from the angle of what a person who is a busybody is not doing, according to this verse. There are three commands that are given, and we can kind of go back from there and discover and help us diagnose what a busybody is, what they look like, so hopefully we can be able to understand whether or not we're guilty. First of all, a busybody spends too much time talking and not enough time listening for the right reasons. Notice what the very first command in this verse is. Paul tells the believers, study to be quiet. Study to be quiet. Now, everybody has a little bit different of a personality. And there are some people that they are just outgoing. You know, they're the type A kind of people. They've never met a stranger in their life. And they're just oftentimes very chatty people. Other people have a little bit more subdued personality. Maybe you call them type B. Uh, Maybe you call them by... Uh, the designation of an introvert, but there's somebody who just maybe is not quite as outgoing. Now, what the Bible is talking about here is not talking about you and I converting from one personality type to another. Regardless of our natural inclinations, every one of us needs to obey the command of this verse that says we are to study to be quiet. It doesn't mean that we're to be silent. It doesn't mean that we're to never speak. But it does mean that we should spend more time listening than we do talking. You see, a person who is a busybody loves to talk about others. And so they spend much time talking about others and not enough time listening for the right reason. You know, it's been rightly said that uh, God has given us two ears and one mouth so that we could listen twice as much as we talk. I believe that there's truth in that because the Bible uh, warns us constantly about being careful about our speech. James chapter 3 talks about how our speech is always going to be a potential source of sin for us. James 3, 6 says, "...the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and is setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell." Each of us is going to have to constantly be on guard lest our mouth, lest our speech cause us to sin. And when it warns us to study to be quiet, it's not just warning us to make sure that what our words mean are correct, but also simply the number of them. The Bible says in Proverbs 10, 19, "...in the multitudes of words there wanteth not sin." That is, there is no lack of sin when there are a lot of words. But the verse goes on to say, He that refraineth his lips is wise. Sometimes the best thing you can say is nothing at all. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 3 says, For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. Listen, a person who is known for how much they talk... The Bible says that is the characteristic of a foolish person. So talking, when you have, especially when you have nothing of substance to say, is a sign of foolishness. But oftentimes, we feel like we have to say something. Have you ever been in a situation like that and you've been, you've been confronted with the awkward silence? You know? You're standing in a group of people and friends and everybody's chatting and all of a sudden everybody stops and... Yeah, you're feeling it now, right? Like somebody say something, right? And so you just say something because you feel like something has to be said. And so we all struggle with that. And and we often feel like, well, if I don't speak up, people are going to think I'm foolish. But the Bible says the exact opposite is true. Proverbs 17, 28 says, Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. That that proverb has been popularized in a slightly different saying. 
Have you ever heard the expression, it's better to keep your mouth shut and be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt? That's, that's really the idea of this proverb here. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. But see, a busybody doesn't do that. They're not quiet. They're always chatting. They're always talking, even when they have nothing to say. The Bible says that that is foolishness. A busybody will often be talking more than they're listening. But look at a verse again. It says, study to be quiet. And then number two, do your own business. I will summarize this symptom this way. A busybody has the wrong kind of curiosity. And I'm emphasizing the concept of your own business versus someone else's. Now, curiosity is a God-given trait. God put it in the heart of man at creation to be curious, to want to learn, to want to investigate, to want to study. That's not a bad thing in and of itself. Curiosity becomes bad when we're curious about the wrong things. And in this context, we're talking about things that really don't have anything to do with us. They're not our business. So the problem of a busybody is not that they're curious, but that they're curious about the wrong thing. A busybody is curious about what other people are saying and what other people are doing, and so they seek to satisfy that curiosity by snooping. You know, if you're not involved in a matter and it has nothing to do with you, then it is best to stay out of it. Listen to this proverb. Proverb 26, 17. He that passeth by and meddleth with strife not belonging to him, is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. Have you ever read that proverb before and thought, what does that mean? Let's think about that. He that passeth by and meddleth with strife not belonging to him. So somebody's walking by and here are two people that are arguing. Now, what is our natural tendency when we see a situation like that? What are they arguing about? Let's listen in. Who's, who's winning this debate here? And we get naturally curious and we begin, to, we begin to eavesdrop maybe a little bit. And then maybe we decide, you know what? I can help them. And so we insert ourselves into the debate, whatever it is. So we meddle, that's what this means, meddle in this strife not belonging to us. The proverb says that if you do that, you're like a person who takes a dog by the ears. Well, what does that mean? Here's, here's the idea. You've got a dog. Maybe it's a little mean, and you want to get control of this dog, or you at least don't want it to hurt you. So what do you do? You reach down and you grab this dog by the ears. Now, if you get a firm grip on a dog's ears, that dog is not going to hurt you as long as you have a firm grip on its ears. But you cannot hang on to its ears forever. What's going to happen when you let go? That dog's coming after you, right? And so the idea of the proverb here is when you meddle in things that are none of your business, you will inevitably get hurt by it. There may be a time that you can prevent it from coming back on you, but if you are a meddlesome person, eventually it'll come back to bite you. As long as you can maybe, you know, continue your meddling and appear to be helpful, maybe it's okay but eventually, it's going to turn. And as I was studying for this message, I wondered, is this proverb where the expression, curiosity killed the cat, came from? I don't know. But see, the wrong kind of curiosity is actually fed by the previous symptom, that desire to talk, always wanting to be saying something, because... That that desire to always want to have something to say leads you to search for more things to talk about. And so you're listening, but you're listening to the wrong things for the wrong reason. We should listen, but we should listen to learn and be wise. A busybody listens to learn something new so they can talk about it, so they can meddle in other people's business. I'm just... Maybe part of why I'm sharing this today is just a frustration I've had in general. And I see it's very common in Christian circles because of the culture we live in. Media, so many times, the news often has absolutely nothing to do with you and me. I, 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 I don't need to know which Hollywood stars are breaking up. I just 
doesn't affect my life at all. And there's so much news that is fed to us that is absolutely useless and pointless, and it's none of our business. Busybodies, on the other hand, they're always out for something, looking for something new to talk about, someone else to gossip about. The word for this in the Bible is being a talebearer. Leviticus 19.16, Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Do you know that was in Leviticus? I know when we read through Leviticus, we're like, you know, reading how they cut up all the animals and all this, you know, stuff about the priest's garment. And they're like, what's the point of this? And then we get to a verse like that and we're like, oh, okay. There's some real 21st century stuff here that we need to deal with. Don't be a talebearer. That's pretty good instruction for today, is it not? Proverbs 26 and verse 20, Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. And where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceaseth. Busybodies are curious, but they're curious about the wrong things. And finally, the third symptom here in, our, in the verse we're looking at, 1 Thessalonians 4.11, and it says, and to work with your own hands. So here's the third symptom. A busybody spends too little time working. They spend too little time working. Now they're busy, all right. That's why we call them a busy body. They're just busy doing the wrong thing. They're busy being nosy. They're busy intruding into other people's affairs. Turn over to 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5. Paul is giving some instructions here about younger widows and widows in general, what they are to do. And uh, he, he, he in, advises the younger widows to remarry. And here's his reasoning in verse number 13. If they don't remarry, it says, 1 Timothy 5, 13, And with all they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. And not only idle, but tattlers also and busybodies speaking things which they ought not. This is why he advises the younger widows to remarry is so that they stay busy doing the right thing. Not so so that they don't have the time to be idle and to wander from house to house. See, busybodies are idle. They're not inactive but they're idle because they're not doing any profitable work. And notice how he talks about them wandering from house to house. Now, back in Bible times, if you wanted information on someone, if you wanted the next tidbit of juicy gossip, this is how you had to have it. You had to go from house to house. It was either that or get two tin cans and a string, you know, and do that thing. And so he knew that there was a danger that, that, they, that these people who wouldn't have anything to do would spend all their time walking around getting the next piece of juicy gossip to, t- to bear those tales, to be a busybody. Nowadays, we don't have to go house to house. You know, Alexander Graham Bell gave us the telephone. So then we could, we could call and we could share that. And, and then we went beyond that. Now we have the internet. We have text messaging. We have social media. We have all kinds of ways to digitally and virtually go from house to house. But it's all the same problem. Instead of spending time doing profitable work, a busybody doesn't work with their own hands. Instead, they meddle in other people's business. A busybody can fill their day with snooping and gossiping but they're not spending their time doing anything profitable. Too little time spent working leaves too much time spent being a busybody. So this is the diagnosis of a busybody. They're not quiet. They don't mind their own business. And they don't spend their time doing anything profitable. Instead, they go about talking about others, sharing gossip, bearing tales. So now, let's discuss the cure for being a busybody. If these are the symptoms in the diagnosis, then we take the command at face value in verse number 11 of 1 Thessalonians 4, and we find that it is the cure for busybody, being a busybody. 
First of all, if you don't want to be a busybody, then do be quiet. I like this verse in Proverbs 14, 23. In all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. Penury means poverty. In all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. If you've ever worked in a, in a job at all, you know how this works. You see people all the time, they're just standing around talking instead of working. How much work are they getting done when they're just standing around talking? Not a lot. That's not to say you can't have conversations while you're working, but too often people are just standing around talking instead of working. We need to be quiet. We need to get busy doing our own work. And that means not allowing the desire to always be chatting be a distraction. Number two, mind your own business. Mind your own business. In order to do that, you need to figure this out. What is your job? In every sphere of life, we have different roles, we have different responsibilities, and we need to make sure we remember that. What is my responsibility as a husband? What is my responsibility as a father? What is my responsibility as a pastor? And in my spheres of life, I need to mind that business. I need to give it my focus, I need to give it my energy, I need to give it my intention. I don't need to be distracted by other people's jobs, I need to do my own. Because curiosity can kill productivity. Turn to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. Here is a verse that is exactly what we're talking about here. A discussion between the Lord Jesus Christ and Simon Peter. We've been studying Peter's life recently on Wednesday nights. We talked about this some weeks ago in, in this particular passage. But the Lord Jesus is telling Peter what his job is. Peter, feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Peter, I want you to be the leader as this new thing the New Testament church launches. And so, Peter, verse number 21 of John 21, Peter seeing him, that's referring to John, the Apostle John, saith to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? Peter, Jesus has just gotten done telling Peter, this is what you're going to do. I want you to do this. I want you to do this. And so Peter says, well, what about him? What's he going to do? Notice Jesus' response in verse 22. Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Jesus said, If I wanted him to live until I come back again, what does that have to do with you, Peter? Now that's not what Jesus was saying, that he wanted him to live like that. That rumor had started, but that's not what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying, even if I did want that, what does it have to do with you, Peter? Follow thou me. Mind your own business, Peter. Don't worry. We spend so much time worrying about what other people are doing. And we're going to talk in a minute as we close about the balance here, but... I don't think our problem most of the time is that we focus on ourselves too much in doing our own business. I don't think that's usually our problem. I think usually our problem is getting distracted from that. And just like Peter, we want to know, well, what are they going to do? Jesus says, don't worry about them. You follow me. Mind your own business. And then number three, the cure for being a busybody, get to work. Work with your own hands. I like how the Bible says that. It's talking about manual labor. Getting busy doing something. I know that in our culture there's, there's a lot of jobs that don't involve a whole lot of you know, intense physical uh, exertion. And so you know, it's, it's a little different nowadays, but there is still a very definite sense where you are engaging your whole person in a particular job, whether it is manual labor in the sense of like construction work or something like that, or even if you're sitting in an office somewhere at a computer, you're still engaging your whole person in the job. The point is get to work. Do something. Do something productive with your life. Stay busy doing things that are beneficial. And give it your all. Ecclesiastes 9.10 Where Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. You know what that verse is saying? Whatever you're doing, give it 100%. Because you don't get a second chance at life. So whatever you're doing, whatever your job is, 
whatever your responsibilities are in any given sphere of life, give it your all. Do it with your might. Don't be distracted by other things that have nothing to do with you. This problem of people not working is getting to be a plague in our culture here in America. I looked up some statistics this last week, and of the population in America that could work, did you know that only roughly 60% of them actually do? Only 60% is what the official labor participation rate is, and that's where they, where they, uh, they, they classify, you know, here's the people that could work, and how many of them actually do? And I don't, I don't know the details, I'm sure, including that, or some of, some of you in here who are retired, you've worked your whole life, and now you're reaping the reward for it. God bless you, I'm not talking about you in this right now, okay? Although, I would caution you not to let yourself become idle and become a busybody, but in this idea of people being willing to work, it's staggering to me the number of people who could work but won't. They just won't. You know, we hear things like the unemployment rate is 4%, and we think, well, great, 96% of Americans are working. That's not how that is. It's not how those numbers work. There's a staggering number, millions and millions and millions of people, tens of millions of people in our country who could work but don't. And part of the, a big part of the problem is, is we pay them to do that. We pay them to not work. Now, I, I, don't, I don't have a problem assisting those who genuinely need assistance. But first Thess- or Second Thessalonians rather says in chapter 3, verse 10, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, he sh- neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. Get to work. Get busy. Look, there is... I know, I know we think work is a curse. Did you know that before the fall, God gave man a job to do? Even before sin, God gave man the responsibility to take care of creation. It's just that because of sin, that labor became toil. The joy was... Some of the joy was taken out of it and became more more of a drudgery than it needed to be. But there is something honorable in godly labor. If you would not be a busybody, get to work. Stay busy doing things that are beneficial. And I want to I want to close by zeroing in on that concept particularly. What should we be doing that is beneficial? I think about the story of Jesus, the only story we have from his childhood in Luke chapter 2, when he's 12 years old. He goes to Jerusalem with Mary and Joseph, and they're there keeping the feast, and they're with a large group of people, and when it's time to leave, they head out, basically assuming Jesus is somewhere in the company and the crowd they had traveled with. They get out of town a little ways, and Mary says to Joseph, hey, do you know where Jesus is? And Joseph says, I thought he was with you. And Mary's like, you lost the Son of God? Really? Really? Okay, maybe that's not exactly how it's said. But they can't find Jesus, and so they go back into Jerusalem, and they find Him, and He's there at the temple, and He's asking and answering questions. He's 12 years old, and everybody's just amazed at His knowledge and His wisdom. And and she comes to Jesus, Mary does, and and there's almost a, a tinge of scolding in her voice as she says to Jesus, didn't you know that your father and I were seeking you? And in Luke 2, 49, Jesus said, how is it that she sought me? Wished ye not that I must be about my father's business? There's a gentle rebuke there in the words of Jesus. You should have known that I would be focused on my father's business. Spiritual things. Jesus later would say in Matthew 6, verse 33, in the Sermon on the Mount, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We need to focus in every sphere of life. Whatever our job is specifically, we need to focus on the spiritual aspects of life. Turn to one more passage with me. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. 
While you're turning, let me read John 6, 27. Jesus said, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, for, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. We need to keep spiritual things a priority in our life. Spiritual business. And among the things that are our spiritual business is our job to be a witness and to preach the gospel. Now I've had you turn to John chapter 4 because we find the story of Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the well. And when you look at their conversation, to be honest, it could almost seem like Jesus was not minding his own business. Remember, he says to this woman, he says, go get your husband. She says, well, I don't have a husband. And Jesus says, that's right, you don't have a husband. You've had five of them, and the man you're living with now is not your husband. Whoa, wait a second. That's getting pretty personal, isn't it? That's getting pretty personal there. Was Jesus being a busybody? No, our Lord was not being a busybody. He was demonstrating genuine concern and compassion for a lost soul. He knew all about this woman and he wanted her to know all about him. And so, yes, he got personal with her. And when we talk about not being a busybody, we're not saying that you should you know, get inside a shell, never talk to people, never get personal, don't get close. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is you should do those things for the right reason. You should genuinely care about people and you should want to get to know people for the right reason. See, Jesus came to this earth to seek and to save that which is lost. That was His business. And by the way, it is your business and mine too. And so in John chapter 4, the disciples come, Jesus has had this conversation And they know he hasn't eaten anything, and so they're telling him, Master, you need to eat something. Stop, take a break, let's eat. And he says in verse 34, notice his words, My meat, that which sustains me, is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish, notice this phrase, his work. That's what Jesus was focused on. He knew that his business was the Father's business, the spiritual business of winning souls. You see, when we say mind your own business, we we don't mean that we don't care about others, but rather that we focus on fulfilling our obligations and our responsibilities and keeping spiritual things a priority in our life. See, one day each of us is going to answer to God for ourselves. Romans 14, 12, So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Even in the context of a family, the husband will never answer for the decisions that his wife made, only how he led her. Mom and dad will not answer for the decisions that the children made, only how they led them. We are responsible for ourselves. A boss will never answer for the decisions an employee made. Only how good and how godly of, a, of an employer or a boss that they were. We must mind our own business and make sure that we focus on the spiritual business of life. Our culture today is just, just permeated with a spirit of busybodiness. You have the tabloids, you have programs. I don't know if it still exists or not. I remember hearing about Inside Edition growing up. There's a there's a outlet now called TMZ that's all about exposing, you know, the all of these things that celebrities are, are done. People write tell-all books and they make millions of dollars off of, you know, all of these things that were happening behind the scenes in this government or in this place. and Social media is filled with people snooping and and there's no shortage of very arrogant, narcissistic people that will share all the information of their life. And so all of these things thrive in an economy of busybodiness. But as Christians, we need to mind our own business. And a large part of that business is the business of souls. 
Be concerned about the souls of others, but focus on doing your job. Stop wasting time and energy being a busybody. Start using that energy to labor for eternity. Our Heavenly Father, I thank You that You were concerned enough about us to send Jesus to die on the cross so that we could be saved. And Lord, we need to have that right balance in our lives that is so hard sometimes to achieve. That balance between focusing on our our jobs but not tuning out to the needs of those around us. I'm reminded of the words of the song, Make me a blessing to others. I pray. And Lord, I pray that that we would remember that our business is spiritual business. And especially when it comes to our interaction with the lost, it's the business of sharing the message of the gospel with them so they might be saved. Lord, I pray that you would move in our hearts during this invitation time. Those of us who need to confess that we would confess things, get them right with you. Those of us who are living with low commitment, that we would make the decisions, that we would make the commitments we need to. Lord, you would be glorified in our hearts today. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Would you stand with me? Heads bowed and eyes closed. How, con- how, how concerned are you for those around you? I mean genuinely concerned for their spiritual well-being. Are you concerned or just curious? What we need today is not a lot more curious Christians, but those who are genuinely concerned for those around them. I'm going to ask Dr. Almond to go ahead and begin to play. And as he plays right now, are there people that God has brought to your mind even as we've looked into the Word of God today? Lost people that are in your life or Christians who are away from the Lord? Family or friends or loved ones that you are concerned about? Why don't you take a moment and pray for them right now? Maybe God has convicted you about being a busybody. Go to God right now and confess it. You've been wasting time worrying about and focusing on things that have nothing to do with you. Confess it to the Lord. And let's commit to God today that we're going to genuinely care for others.